a very good day to one and all. So welcome back to another session on pediatric surgery. So I'm Dr. Rohit Gopinath and today we'll be discussing about another very important topic in pediatric surgery, biliary atresia. Biliary atresia is the most common surgical cause of jaundice in infancy. The basic definition of biliary atresia is, is that it's an obliterative disorder involving both intra and extra hepatic ducts. Basically, it's a pan ductula cholangiopathy. So, uh, history of pediatric surgery and biliary atresia in particular, the terminology John Thompson is very commonly associated with it. So, John Thompson in his thesis actually way back in 1891, on obliterative disorders involving the bile ducts has described a case series of biliary atresia. This was in 1891 I am talking about. Mario Kasai, the name is synonymous with biliary atresia. He was a very prominent surgeon who was initially in Japan, and subsequently started practicing in the US, who has studied biliary atresia in detail. In fact, he was the one who suggested that biliary atresia is a progressive disorder which seems to involve the extrahepatic ducts first and then progresses to involve the intrahepatic ducts. He dwelled into the histology of the fibrous remnants in the portal tract and found that there were the, the ductules were completely obliterated, tubules were plugged and all these findings were described by Mario Kasai and he proposed that surgical intervention, if done early, before the progression from extrahepatic to intrahepatic ductules, can occur, can arrest the progression of the disease process itself. His surgery, Kasai's portoenterostomy, is still the gold standard in the management of biliary atresia. Thomas Tarzel. So, Thomas Tarzel performed the first liver transplantation. In fact, he found that uh, even though his patient passed away subsequently, he is still credited to have initiated the movement towards liver transplantation. Now, nor as I repeatedly said before, no topic in pediatric surgery is complete without an analysis of the embryology behind it. So, the foregut as you can see here from its uh, ventral aspect gives rise to what is called as a hepatic bud. The hepatic bud grows into the ventral mesogastrium as you can see here. And as it grows, it divides into two components. One is called a pars hepatica, another one is called as a pars cystica. Now, the pars hepatica progresses up into the ventral mesogastrium and it combines with the tra septum transversum to form the liver. The pars hepatica divides into two branches at its terminal end to form the right and left hepatic ducts. Rest of the pars hepatica forms the common hepatic duct. The pars cystica develops into the gallbladder as well as the cystic duct. The remnant hepatic bud here forms the common bile duct. Okay, so this is the basic embryology behind the development of the biliary tree. And all this is complete by around 4 to 6 weeks of gestation, approximately 30 to 35 days. So the uh, let's now come on to the epidemiology of biliary atresia. The incidence of biliary atresia seems to vary, vary between the western as well as the eastern populations. We find that its incidence is 1 in 15,000 to 1 in 20,000 in the western population, whereas it seems to be more common among the Asians, particularly the Southeast Asians. In fact, the highest incidence of biliary atresia is noted in Taiwan. Biliary atresia with splenic malformation, which is one of the type, which is one of the types of biliary atresia, is more common in the West as per literature. There seems to be a seasonal variation in the occurrence of biliary atresia, with it being more common during the winter and the rainy seasons. And females tend to get involved more than male children. So, coming on to the types of biliary atresia, now there are two classifications for biliary atresia. One is the Japanese Association of Pediatric Surgeons classification, which we will deal with later. And another one is based on its appearance, based on its occurrence and etiological factor. So, this, uh, this classification basically divides biliary atresia into four different types. One is called BASM. BASM stands for biliary atresia with splenic malformation. It is commonly associated with other conditions, for example, malrotations, preduodinal portal vein, polysplenia, which accounts for the splenic malformations, 
It can also be associated with interrupted IVCs, etc. Now, this association, so why does biliary atresia combine itself with splenic malformation? There are many etiological factors which are said to contribute to its occurrence. Gestational diabetes mellitus and in vitro fertilization are, seems, are said to be one of the factors which can incite a biliary atresia with splenic malformation. There are genetic defects which are said to uh, contribute to its occurrence, which are non-Mendelian in nature. That is, they don't have a pattern as such. Now, there's one particular gene which is called as a CFC1 gene, which seems to code, which seems to get involved or which is said to be a def defective in a child with biliary atresia or splenic malformation. Now, the association of biliary atresia with splenic malformations and other vascular malformations seems to be uh, more related to the time when it occurs rather than the genetic predominance or the genetic defect. In the common uh, time when this particular defect seems to occur is around the 30 to 35 days of gestation, during which time you have the development of the spleen as well as the major vasculature of the, in the region of the liver, developing liver. So, the association between malignant atresia and splenic malformation seems to be more related to the time at which the defect occurs rather than the genetic component, uh, rather than a genetic component to it. Now, there is another variant of biliary atresia, second variant of biliary atresia called a cystic biliary atresia. It accounts for 10% of biliary atresias and it is characterized by the formation of a cyst. In a cyst, proximal and distal to the cyst, the biliary tree is obliterated. This cyst is usually filled with mucus or might contain bile as well. It is common, it is a common differential diagnosis for a cholidocal cyst. We have already discussed about cholidocal cysts in our previous classes. A classical intraoperative cholangiogram appearance of a cystic biliary atresia is a pruned tree or a cloud-like appearance as you can see here. Now, it is one of the better variants of biliary atresia in, in the fact that it has a better response to surgical intervention.